to visit Marlene Gomez, who returned three years ago to her home place near Jaranopolis in the heart of the Brazilian countryside. So this is where Marlene's farm is. She said there was four kilometers of bad road, so it's going to take a while, I'd say. Um, I thought it was going to be like an Irish style. <laughs> Sorry. That is going to be Ooh! an Irish style bad road, but this is a Brazilian style bad road. This is your home. Nice to meet yeah, you. How are yeah. you? <laughs> I've arrived just in time for milking and I'm going to give her a hand. Literally. I've never done this before. And come on, this one. <laughs> Go for okay, the it's only milk. It's only milk. Go for one hand. It's just so warm. <laughs> I'm from the city, you know. <laughs> Go for a wash. I can't do it anymore. Hang on, hang on. And are you getting emotional thinking about Ireland? <laughs> yeah, I miss Ireland. Why? I miss it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't get sad. But why do you miss Ireland? I miss uh, the life I had and uh, my friends, you know. I came here to find the people who called Ireland home for so long and what I found was that they came back, they built beautiful houses, they set their own businesses up and they generally lead a much more comfortable life than they did before they left. The downside of the good news is that they have a lingering hole in their heart for their adopted country. And I suppose the difficult side of emigration is something that Irish people and Irish families can identify with. As a consequence of one man, Jerry from West Cork, you walk around this city and places like Villa Fabril and you bump into people who identify as strongly with Athen Rye and Loch Way as they do about Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro. And it's kind of crazy and kind of wonderful. To most of us, it's the slimy stuff that gets in the way when you're trying to enjoy a day at the beach. But in fact, seaweed is becoming an increasingly lucrative resource. From its use in pamper treatments to its power to fuel a car, it's extremely versatile and has the potential to generate big business for Ireland. It's very important that we take care of, of, of our actions. Huh? So seaweed is kind of like the rainforest of the sea. That's right, And you yeah. need to mind it. You need to mind it, yeah. Can I use it? Yeah. It's uh, very tasty. Go ahead. That's delicious. It is, isn't it? <laughs> I never knew. Don't eat it if all. If you get hungry at the beach, you can eat this stuff instead of having chips. <laughs> you can actually buy a pack of eight burgers for as little as one euro fifty, which is about 18 cent each. Which begs the question, what goes into a value burger and how can they be made so cheaply? Paddy is going to take me through the process of creating my very own value burger using the UK's minimum meat requirement as a guide. Oh yeah, it's really tough. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our, our dry ingredients. Oh, it suddenly started looking less appealing. So Paddy, how much of this mix is lean meat? We're talking maybe about 20%, maybe 20, 25% is actually lean meat. Wow, and everything else is fat, collagen, and all these dry ingredients. Exactly. And water. And water. Like knowing what's gone into it makes mm. me kind of not like it as much, but mm. in terms of taste, um, it tastes like a burger. Sports drink advertising is full of powerful messages, but what effect are they having on young sporting minds? Sports drinks are cool. No. Tell me, yeah. why do you like them? I scored my first goal of the season last season because I had a sports drink. You gave me that extra kick? My mom doesn't have me them, but once she gave it to me and I like felt really charged. Charged? And do you think it makes you better at sport? Yeah. This week I'm investigating the molecules behind molecular gastronomy. You're so precise, you are like a scientist. Everything is so exact. Do you want me to destroy this beautiful creation? Let's go for it. Okay, I'll dig in. Mmm, <laughs> amazing. I can't believe how science can bring something like this together and make it so yum. Yeah, it's a perfect example of the interplay between science and nature. I think this is the best science story I've ever done. <laughs>